I have a worksheet here. You fill in the blanks, as you well know. We've done this in the past. And if you do not have a copy of the lesson this morning, if you'd raise your hand, then Ryan would uh, give you one. I think he probably has a couple of them late, all the adults. All right. As you notice, the introduction here of this passage, giving a picture of a very attractive uh, advertisement pictured, a crowd of men walking down the street dressed in their business suits and carrying their briefcase. And uh, there was one individual in the uh, uh, picture that was taking a giant step, leaving the crowd behind. And it had this caption that read, step out of the crowd, step out of the crowd. Now there's some good lessons in that, both spiritually and physically, but we're looking for a spiritual a lesson uh, from this statement this morning. So the Bible does have a number of things to say about crowds. For example, in Exodus chapter 23 and in verse 2, the writer says, Thou shalt not follow the multitude to do evil. So there's one example of what the Bible has to say in regards to uh, the multitude. And of course, the one that was read by Larry uh, from the 32nd chapter of the book of Chronicles. And then we can uh, also add to this, and you can look this up later, in Luke the 23rd chapter, verses 1 and 21. Where there you can see where the crowd in uh, crying for the life of Jesus and also pointing out the fact that they were saying crucify him, crucify him. So the crowd, you know, were uh, crying for his blood. And then we can see too in the 16th chapter of the book of Luke and in the 22nd verse uh, there that uh, expression is pointed out to us. So the Bible does have some things to say about multitudes. Do not follow the multitude to be uh, coming into evil. Now, at times there are really an important uh, matter about following a multitude or having a multitude. You know, sometimes an individual may feel like that he is alone and he needs some encouragement. He needs some help for his own safety. I can remember that in the services sometimes they would tell the troops or the boys in service as they go out on leave that you stay away from a certain part of town if you're alone. You need to have some other soldiers with you if you're going to be going through that section of town because they realized that one could be, you know, even killed or beaten up and but with a multitude of them or several of them then they would be protection one for another. So in that sense, we can see that the multitude could be used in a good way. But the church is challenged by crowds. And we find too that the individual is uh, challenged by crowds. And we are to step out of the crowd. For example, over in the book of 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter in verse 17, the apostle Paul said, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will heal you. And so there we find that we do need to step out of the crowd. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 13, we can see there that we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. And then in the Hebrew letter, chapter 7, where we read about Christ being our high priest, and we have a high priest that uh, is able to, uh, you know, serve us and to provide for us. But yet we can see that we are to follow uh, the examples that Christ, our great high priest, uh, follow. We should be separated from the world. Well, let's notice now some basic facts about stepping out of the crowd. And here's where you start having a little activity of your own filling in the blanks. Let us notice now why some won't or don't step out of the crowd. And 
Each of these lines that you're to fill in, the beginning of that line has a letter, an alphabetical letter. And that's going to stand for the word that we're going to be filling in there. And so here we can see that some won't step out of the crowd because it is popular to be in the crowd. And we find that the being the problem with so many young people today. And always have been that, I suppose. We do not want to feel like that we're uh, different from anybody else. And so we want to feel a part of the crowd. And so for that reason, some won't step out of the crowd. We find in the second place that it is safe in the crowd. As I pointed out a moment ago in regards to the instructions given to soldier boys, sometimes you take some with you because there's safety in that. And so people find out that there's some safety in the crowd and so they do not want to step out of the crowd it may not always in the long run be the safe thing to do and it is not always that way but we can see that it's a reason that is given in the third place you want to write in the word comfortable it is comfortable to be in the crowd and we can see various reasons for that we find that it's not uh, that an individual cares to be looked at as being different from everybody else. They don't want the people to make fun of them and uh, give them a hard time and damn them and all of this. And so that's the reason why some will not step out because it's not always easy to take the kidding and so they'd rather be along with the crowd because they feel comfortable in that. And in the next place, we can see that it is not always uh, easy to step out of the crowd or some will not step out of the crowd because it is not convenient. There's that C again, convenient to be in the crowd. And so you don't have to do much. You don't have to, much work to do. You don't have to do any thinking. And you can see that you just go along with the crowd and everybody's happy about it, and you're not going to uh, ruffle up their gatherings and things of that nature. You're just one of the crowd. Well, again, we can see the next item is that some are there in the crowd because of fear. The Apostle Paul, when he wrote to the young evangelist Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, he tells us that uh, God is not the author of, of fear. In, in those uh, uh, words uh, that we can say that that is the case. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and in the 7th verse. Here he says, Wherefore uh, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And so we don't have to worry it about having that fear if we put our trust in the Lord. But yet we can see that some are really, uh, because of fear, you know, they might have a, some bully or someone to push over them, and so they want to stay with the crowd. And then we find in the next blank, some are there because of ignorance. They do not know any better. They haven't studied the Word of God that they might know that they have God's help in living a Christian life. Some do not have conviction. And that's also the case in so many uh, cases. Some do not want to step out of the crowd because they do not really have any convictions. One way or the other. You can go that way or you can not go that way. It doesn't make any difference. They're not trying to please uh, God or anyone else. So now let us notice, since we have pointed out the fact that the Bible has some things to say about multitudes, about crowds, and we can see that we are encouraged to come out from among them and be separated. Then we learn that we have here uh, some reasons why that people are not willing to step out of the crowd. Let's notice now some who dare to step out of the crowd. 
We have a number of Bible examples for that. The first example we care to use is set forth with the letter A. And I'm sure that as you look at that as an example, you're thinking about Father Abraham. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, was told that he was to leave his home and his country. And he would uh, be given a great nation. He would be given a, there's a land promise that is there. And he was told to leave the land of the Ur of the Chaldees, his father's place. And we can see then that he did that. He stepped out of the crowd. He was old in years, and I'm sure that uh, he was very comfortable, as far as we can tell, in all inference and all indications, that Abraham was quite well off. And so Abraham stepped out of the crowd to do what God asked him to do, to go to a land that he would show him. Now then, the next individual we notice here that is one who dared to step out of the crowd, we might think about Abraham's nephew, Lot. In Genesis, the 19th chapter, we're told by God that, Abraham, that Lot was told to flee the city of Sodom, of Sodom. Flee the city. And the reason is set forth there. It became so wicked. And the Lord was going to destroy the city of Sodom. And he gives the warning to Lot and gets Lot out of that city because Lot went forth as he was told to do. His two single daughters at home and his wife, his wife, you remember, turned back. Look, she was told not to do that. She was turned to a pillar of salt. And, and Lot had talked to his sons-in-law and they uh, did not leave the city, so they were destroyed. But because they were stepping out of the crowd, if you please. And then another one we find is that of David. David, it stands for D there. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 31 through 39 would give you a good uh, picture of this. The crowd on this occasion was Israel. And we find that they were, the soldiers at least, were all afraid of that giant that came out each morning and issued a challenge to them to come out and fight him. And if he would win, then they would be, you know, uh, subject to the Philistines. And we find that David said he would go. God would be with him. He pointed out the fact how that the Lord had been with him in tangling with a bear and a and a lion, and now then he is talking about this man that uh, with God, he was equal to him and more than equal to him. And so notice then that he stepped out of the crowd as well and says, who is this uncircumcised individual? And then he goes on to point out that uh, what had happened and God would take care of that situation. David stepped out of the crowd the last one on this outside page, or the first page, is Micaiah, or Micaiah, Micaiah. And this is found in 1 Kings chapter 22, and in verse 8, 1 through 8. And on that occasion, you remember that the request was made that should they do this or do that, and would God give his permission, be with them, some 400 prophets, being considered false prophets. 400 of them gave the fact that you go up, but Micaiah, or Micaiah, the 401st prophet that was consulted, he said, you will be destroyed. He dared to step out and give the truth about the matter that God wasn't pleased with the situation at hand. And so it was not a wise thing for them to uh, go out. And if they did, then they would have to suffer the consequences. You know, sometimes today, it takes stepping out of the crowd to be able to tell a person what everybody else has said, we're all all right. 
you're okay, I'm okay, and everybody's okay. And uh, yet there's one they don't like to hear from because he says, you're not okay unless you do what God says to do. And if they have not done that, then they should be able to make the decision that they have not done that and do not let someone then persuade them that they're all right in God's sight unless they do. Well, I hope you're keeping up with the uh, blanks filling in or just if you don't want to do that, you want to do it later, well, that's your prerogative. But on the back page, we find three, 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And you remember in that uh, Pentecost day, the first Pentecost following the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, that the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the apostle Peter, in that uh, vast audience of people, I don't know how many people exactly would be there, but I've known of estimates that have been made, hundred or more thousand people in, in the city of Jerusalem on Pentecost. And out of that number, the apostle Peter in preaching to them along with the other apostles, Peter said, you have taken this same Jesus whom have been, uh, that have been crucified, he's been made both Lord and Christ. And so when they heard that, they were pricked in their hearts and he said unto them, or as they asked him the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And as a result of that, some of them received the word and they received it gladly. And they rendered obedience to the, to the gospel. Out of that crowd, some 3,000 of them stepped out and mentioned the fact that we're not going to go with the crowd. We're stepping out of the crowd. So uh, these two blanks has the number of 3,000. Also, we recognize that Saul of Tarsus in Acts chapter 9, we had the conversion of Saul. And Saul, if you think about it, was an individual who was brought up in the Jewish religion. He was a Jew of the Jew. He was a full-blooded Jew, Pharisee of the Pharisees. And we find that this individual left his father's religion. Is it all right to leave a person's father's religion? It is if that religion is wrong. And so Paul found that he had been taught that uh, the Christians were imposters. He didn't believe that they were of God. And so here he was going to persecute them and brought them back to be tried, put to death. And here the apostle Paul gave up all of this. He stepped out of the ranks of the Pharisees, Galatians chapter one. He said he was uh, above any of his equal. You see what he had to give up and did give up. He stepped out of the crowd. The crowd says, you go on and make a good uh, uh, Jew in what you are doing religiously. But he knew what the Lord had said and what the Lord had spoken to him through Ananias, the preacher of righteousness. And he said he was stepping out of the crowd and he did step out of the crowd. Now then let's notice the next part of our lesson this morning, why we need to step out of the crowd. Why do we need to step out of the crowd? We may not need to, providing what the crowd is and uh, how they are and, who they and what they stand for. But at the same time, we're looking at it from the standpoint of not being right with God. So why we need to step out of the crowd? Number one, the crowd may be wrong. And oftentimes that's the case, isn't it? Oftentimes that is the case. You know, in Matthew the seventh chapter, verses 13 and 14, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So we need to step out of the crowd here because the broad way is everybody else's way. You see, not concerned with my way or the Lord's way, but everybody else's way. And so this is even true today in 
the church of our Lord. We need then to step out of the crowd because the crowd may be wrong. There's never been a time in the history of man, no doubt, when sin wasn't in the ascendancy. We can see that sin throughout the world and all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. And we note then that the multitude are not going to be doing the right thing all of the time. So we need to be concerned about that. Also, we can see the need to step out of the crowd because of the need of the crowd. The crowd that's lost in sin need to be saved. They need to know the truth. And so we have to be able to step out and do that for their benefit as well. And you notice the term there, the 4.2 plus billion people, that's increased since this was uh, printed a number of years ago. Well, we notice then that we need to step out of the crowd because of the wrong influences. Wrong influence. I was talking a little bit Wednesday night, I believe it was, about influence. And uh, we can see that there are influences that are not good for us, that are wrong. We don't want to follow them. Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 that we need not be deceived because evil companionship or communication corrupt good morals. And so we don't want to uh, be influenced in the wrong way. So we need to step out of the crowd uh, for that reason, because of the wrong influence. You know, sometimes people uh, get caught up with the individuals and they get with the wrong individuals and then their influence, instead of influencing them, they are influenced by them and uh, that's not the way that uh, you want it to be. You influence them for good and if you can't, well then you need not to be with that kind of influence that will take the chance on leading you away from the Lord. The next couple of lines is from the book of Proverbs 6, 27 and 8, that we cannot play with fire and not get burned. You ever thought of that? Here you're playing with fire now, you're going to get burned if you're not careful because you can't play with fire and not get burned. And that's one reason that we need to step out of the crowd and not be influenced by them. Furthermore, we can see another reason why we need to step out of the crowd because we're not going to be judged by the crowd. I know sometimes as individuals, we, we uh, judge a person because of the crowd that he keeps. And in that case, we, we can say we're judging the crowd as well. But when we stand before God in the judgment, well, then the crowd is not going to answer for me. Yes, I was influenced by them, but... They're going to have to give an account for that, being a stumbling block and so on. But I'm going to have to give an account for myself. As the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, he said, for we must all give an account for our sins. Every man must give an account to God for the things we've done, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Also, we can see we need to... Uh, step out of the crowd because of the consequences of following the wrong crowd. So there's consequences that needs to be considered. In second, or rather in Matthew 7, 13, when he said, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be will that will go in thereat. There's the consequences of traveling that way. And then also we can see that there is the reward of our being faithful to the Lord. Verse 14, enter in at the straight gate, for straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now then what does it take to step out of the crowd? What does it take? Well, first of all, it takes Proper knowledge. Proper knowledge. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
Hosea in Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So we need then to have the proper knowledge resulting in the proper understanding of the Lord's way. Second Peter 1 and 3, Peter wrote and he said, according to his divine power, well then he said, uh, well, what is it he said? Uh, he said uh, uh, that these things whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might uh, have eternal life. And then we can also recognize the fact that Paul in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 uh, mentioned the fact that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, completely furnished unto all good works. And of course, that knowledge that we have from God's word creates faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. And the individual Christian can also keep himself free, pure uh, from many of these things in the world, in fact, all if we put it to practice, if we simply grow in knowledge. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, Hebrews 5, 12 through 14, you need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. He said milk belongeth to babes, those by reason of use, having their senses exercised, be the ones that are of wisdom, full grown individual, they are the ones who have practiced what they have studied and learned. They're the ones who put into action those things. Strong meat belongs to men that are full age and not the babes in Christ. What it takes to step out of the crowd is that proper knowledge and understand it. And then we find commitment is what it takes to stay out of, out of the crowd. Don't ever lose your convictions. In Matthew the sixth chapter, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. In Matthew the 16th chapter in verse 24, if any man will come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. You know, we have to follow the Lord. We have to be committed to him and we must do this while we're alive in this life, in this world, and being faithful to the very end of life, Revelations 2 and 10, we must keep alive with the Word of God. Food that is designed for the inward man gives us that strength and the uh, will to do all of God's will. That we notice that we have to have a desire. We must want to you know, step out of the crowd. We must want to not be following the multitude to do evil. Furthermore, we can see that we have to have the right motivation. And what is a better motivation when we have that incentive, uh, in, that uh, incentive and a stimulus to really act, have the right actions? We must come, that must come from within. That must come from within. Colossians 3, 1 and following. If you then be in Christ, seek those things which are above. For Christ sitteth at the right hand of the throne of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. We're dead to sin and we're alive unto the Lord. And then we notice too. We can take this step out of the crowd if we let dissatisfaction. We can keep from doing that if we are not dissatisfied with uh, uh, the will of the Lord and at the same time realize that we can't be satisfied with our conduct in all things because we still have room to grow from time to time. Live to be a hundred. And you can get better every day, and you still have room for growth. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote about that over in this uh, next passage in the third chapter of the book of uh, 
uh, Philippians, and uh, in in that uh, passage, uh, he points out that I know that I'm not already uh, full grown. I know that I I have room to grow, and he says it in this way. Uh, that I may know him, I see. Well, I'm uh, looking at the, uh, the right chapter, but the wrong verses, 13 and 14. Here Paul said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect. Paul is saying that he and the Colossian or the Philippian brethren, some of them were perfect. That is, they were full grown. They were of age. They mature. He said, be thus minded. Well, what kind of mind do you have, Paul? I don't feel like that I know everything. I don't feel like that, they, that I have accomplished everything. But I'm going to forget about some of those things, and I'm going to reach forward to others. I'm going to get better. And so that's the attitude that we uh, need to have. That's a sign, the mark of maturity. God shall revo uh, reveal even this unto you, he is saying. And so dissatisfaction with our own life, we need to want to get better. And then, too, we find there is courage. That's what it takes. That quality of mind here that enables one to meet danger and difficulties with firmness. Deuteronomy 31, 6, 7, and 23. Joshua 1 and 6. Be courage. Proper attitude towards sin. You know, in Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19, six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him. Man has a proud look, a lying tongue, and so on. He names them. And so here we can see that we need to have the proper attitude. Let our attitude be as that of the Lord, because he hates sin. We can hate what God hates, but we can't hate, you know, what God doesn't hate. But we can hate sin, because that separates men from God. And then we need to have faith in God. If we'll follow this plan, well then I think that uh, we have the chance here of, uh, you know, being acceptable in the sight of the Lord. So in conclusion then, are you hiding in a crowd? Do you know why you are in the crowd? That's the first thing I think we need to know. Why am I sticking in the crowd? Why am I trying to go along and uh, doing what everybody else is doing that's not right and not, uh, you know, fair to their fellow man or to themselves and to the Lord. So why is it that uh, I'm still in the crowd? And uh, this would be, of course, as we said here, a perfect time when a man realizes that he's in sin and needs to do something about it. That's the time to do it. And if you've not, if you've gone back into the world, that would still be a good a statement to make. So the lesson is yours this morning. If you're here and you feel a need to respond to the Lord to glorify you and both our, and worship you and uh, this worship hour and follow for the things we study during Bible class. Father, we pray that we have the courage to not only step out of the crowd but to stay out of the crowd and Father that we don't fall back into that as such as the temptation of the world. Father, we mindful of those that have been mentioned this morning, that are on our minds and our hearts, Father, that are ailing right now. Father, you be with them and those that are care for them, that they can get back to them much in health. We pray that you be with Brother Russ as he is still overseas preaching and working for you over in the Marshall Islands. Father, that through his speaking that the word is taught and many can come to know the truth. Father, we ask you to be with us this congregation as we continue to work for you in this community. Father, we can be a shining light and lead others to you and strengthen your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.